Uh, so today we're going to go through um, the June 2015 paper of our rings, polymers and analysis. So let's make a start. First one, we have a student analyzer mixed with compounds found in red wine using gas chromatography. Two of the compounds found um, to be present in the mixture as shown below. Column of the gas is a uh, gas chrom chromatogram is packed with solid beads with a liquid polymer. How does gas chromatography separate the components in the mixture? So remember, for gas chromatography, it depends on the relative solubility in the stationary phase as to how that separates the mixture. Um, the mass spectrum of the first compound to emerge from the column is shown below. Identify the compound responsible for this spectrum given a reason. So hopefully you can see that we have our highest M over Z value is at 124, um, which is this guy here. So let's have a look and we'll see how the other two ways. So if we add up the molar mass of compound A, you find it to be 122. So this guy is 122 and this guy is 124. Um, hopefully you can, if you add them all up, you will get that. Um, so we worked out here that it was the peak at 124 and therefore it must be compound B. So it's compound B and that's because the M over Z value for the molecular ion is 124 for compound B. Okay, so carrying on, what does our answer to B part one suggest about the interaction of this compound with the phases? It suggests, because it's come off the column much faster, it suggests that compound B is less soluble in the stationary phase because it's come straight off the column much faster than compound A. So compound A would be more soluble in the stationary phase, so it stayed on the column longer. Okay, so it's time to do some um, synthesis now, which we all love. So the first thing, let's have a look and see what changes are we actually making. For this one, um, we have got uh, the alcohol or the phenol group hasn't changed. The aldehyde has become a carboxylic acid though. So think in your mind, what makes an aldehyde become a carboxylic acid? And it is of course potassium dichromate. So K2Cr2O7, and remember it needs to be acidified to get that one to work. Um, let's have a look at this one. I have got um, to make an ester here. So I've got sodium borohydride. What's that going to do? Well, it's not going to touch the phenol. You've not been taught anything about phenols with sodium borohydride. However, you do know about aldehyde groups with sodium borohydride. So it is going to not affect the phenol group, so that will remain the same as so. However, my aldehyde group will become a alcohol group as shown there. Okay, now I need to put these together to make an ester. So let's have a look, what have I got? Well, here I've got a carboxylic acid and here I've got an alcohol. Um, and if we put them together, we will of course make an ester. So let's do that. I always start by drawing the carboxylic acid first. Completely up to you, but this is the way I do it. So I'm gonna start with this boy up here. So here I go. Um, uh, let's get rid of that dodgy benzene ring there, okay. There we go. So that's the benzene ring there. Don't forget we've got the phenol group coming off like so. I then go up there, C double bond O, O. And don't forget, rather than drawing that O, I'm gonna draw that O there. So now I'm gonna work back. That becomes CH2 like so. Get my benzene ring and then I've got my phenol group coming off. Um, you've got to get your uh, uh, isomer right. This is the phenol group is coming off. If that's number one, which it will be two, three. So we go 
that way. Oh, and so that's one, two, three there. And also for this guy, one, two, three, one, two, three there. So there's your ester. Okay, so it's time for a mechanism now. I've got a certain formation of compound C from compound A. So let's draw up compound uh, A, first of all. Um, this is, of course, my aldehyde. Um, and it's using sodium bihydride, so I've got the hydride iron as so. You've got your dipoles there. Whoopsie daisy. Let's try that again. I've got my dipoles there, so delta minus, and that carbon is delta plus, of course. Um, and then to get the mechanism, that goes like so. The double bond goes onto the oxygen like so to get my intermediate where I have got a minus on the oxygen but I have formed a new carbon hydrogen bond. Depends how you want to pick it up. Um, as you know it's normally done in water so we do uh, water simplistically like so delta plus delta minus um, let's put him goes to the hydrogen there, that bond goes on to the oxygen of the water to give me a really dodgy uh, benzene ring but with an alcohol attached plus OH minus like so. Okay, so now I need to uh, react one mole of compound B with two moles of bromine with electrophilic substitution. So the key thing to note is that we have a phenol group attached. So let's draw him and then you've got an OH group there. Remember from uh, when you've done this before in class, you substitute bromine in the two, four, six position. The six position is already taken up, so I'm adding two Br2, so that's going to give me um, this guy, CH3, OH, but I've substituted bromine in the two and the four position like so, and you remember you would also make it to HBR to get it to all balance out. Okay, so uh, the next question is asking me about the two structures of benzene. So chemists often use two different structures to represent benzene as shown below. Describe the difference between A and B. So this is A, and in A, remember you had these as considering it as to be th three different carbon-carbon double bonds. So this is a typical alkene. So think back to your alkene chemistry. You've got P orbitals overlapping to form a pi bond localised between two carbon atoms, and you just have three of them. In um, B, the pi bond is delocalized over all six carbon atoms like so. So you'll have two rings, so you have a pi bond above and below the ring of carbon atoms. Um, so pi bond and they are delocalized electrons and you actually have six. So you have a pi bond of six delocalized electrons. Okay, um, and then uh, how do you explain it? In this one, your p orbitals overlap to form pi bonds in both. In A, the pi bonds are localized between two carbon atoms. In B, the pi bonds are delocalized over all six carbon atoms. Oh, right, so this is an interesting question. We're looking at the stability now of benzene. So how can we look at that? So this is taking uh, an um, alkene, um, cyclohexene, and reacting with hydrogen to form cyclohexane. So that's taking one double bond and putting hydrogen across it. And for that, it's an exothermic reaction by 119 kilojoules per mole. 
But remember, in our model of benzene, we actually had three. So when we were thinking of benzene being like this, um, with a three separate ones, I, because I've got three of those, if I took that, I'd be expecting it to be three times minus 119, which comes to minus 357. Um, taking the model, the model benzene, uh, which is where it is delocalized. So my delocalized benzene, the enthalpy change is only minus 208 kilojoules per mole um, to get to the same product, which is cyclohexane. So therefore the delocalized system is more stable. Hmm. So delocalized benzene, oops, let's get back the pen, oh. delocalized benzene is more stable, mm, sorry about this, is more stable, Um, because the hydrogenation of benzene is less exothermic. So we can say the hydrogenation of benzene of benzene is less exothermic. Um, so benzene is minus 208, but this uh, system where we have localised carbon-carbon bonds, we'd expect to be minus 357. Okay, so um, interesting question now. We've got uh, benzene compounds can undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions, and it's given me an example which you probably haven't seen before. Um, in which uh, this guy leaves um, in step one to produce benzene with a positive charge and then I have a nucleophile coming in to replace where the N2 group was. Um, add curly arrows to show the two-step mechanism. So going from there to there, hopefully you can see that my electrons have gone onto that nitrogen because a plus charge has disappeared and it's left benzene with a plus and going from there to there, this guy has attacked that benzene ring, uh, a carbon atom on the benzene ring there. So I then have another uh, reaction, which you probably haven't seen before, uh, you may have done. Uh, benzene can react with halogen or alkanes in the same way as bromine, as shown in the reaction below. And you can see that, that I've replaced a hydrogen atom there with this group there, and produced HBr. So effectively, what we've done is that BR has gone um, and where it was before, that's gone off with the hydrogen that was there to give me HBR and I formed a new carbon-carbon bond there. Write an equation on the formation of the electrophile. So what is the electrophile? The electrophile is that boy there. So, um, and remember you would have looked at uh, iron tribromide before in generating electrophiles. So that's my halogen arrow cane. Um, I react it with FeBr3. This takes the bromine off to give me CH3 to CH plus and I form FeBr or minus like so. So that's the generation of my electrophile.